All right, y'all. So listen, we are back. Let's talk about generation. Generate. Right? Generation means we are going to generate an income. And anything that we do when it comes to money, you're not going to go anywhere if you don't know how to generate a dollar. We want to increase our job skills so that we, our hour is worth more dollars so we can generate dollars faster. Another way we can do that is by leveraging other people's time, right? We leverage other people's time through things like employees, right, or contractors. That's creating a business. We create a business, we leverage other people's times, energy, and effort in order to be able to generate a large amount of income, right? We create the systems, ideas, the concepts, and we employ other people to make sure that, that those things happen and we can execute and, and basically generate a large income. The third way we can do this is through side hustles, and that's by leveraging our time, leveraging our uh, effort and energy, or leveraging our cash. We can put our cash to work by buying assets like Turos or Airbnbs or other types of side hustles out there that can generate us cash on a, on a passive scale or even an active scale, but the idea is they're making money for us, all right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about generation and how you guys can generate an income for yourself at a high level. We're gonna tell you a little bit about our story with generation and yeah. how we started to generate an income. Right. And I promise you guys, listen, it's, a, it's, it's we got some good stories, man. We man, done done it all. Crazy, crazy. So when it comes to generation, right, so, Francis and myself actually met when I was in my generation phase. I had my nine to five, that's when yeah, we met facts. through another business partner, which he had a side hustle. That was a side hustle that we were doing at the time. So we really were in the generation phase, yeah. full fledged, you know yeah, what I'm man. saying? So I was working uh, at a property management firm, like, you know, nine to five, but at the same time, I had my side hustle, right? So what Francis was saying, I was exchanging my time for money because at that point, I wasn't ready to become a full-time entrepreneur yet. Yeah. You don't want to jump in that water when Listen, you're not ready. I <laughs> never thought this guy yeah. would ever jump oh, in that never. water, man. He, oh, when man. I tell you, Jay never. was like the, like the pinnacle of buttoned up, yep. nine to five, I'm here to Suit do my tie. job. Bro yeah. had this, the fresh skin tight yep. fade, suited and booted every day. He's out there Business. working, getting to it. And I'm over here Business. just hustling, looking yeah. scraggly. I'm out here working, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. put, trying to put things together, man. It was yeah. different, different time period. Different time period, man. So, man, through that nine to five, man, I was able to leverage. Like, you know, even though I was at my nine to five, I was always looking for opportunity to be able to, you know, leverage my time. Even while I'm at work or sometimes even right after work, we have business meetings, yeah. we have planning sessions, we're on drawing boards, we're yeah. doing this, we're doing that, we're going to an event about our brand, et cetera, et cetera. So, man, the generation phase, I think, is so important for so many people because, you know, especially in this system that we're in currently, like when you come out of school, a lot of people struggle to get into the generation phase. A lot of people might have, you know, a passion that they want to turn into um, essentially a side hustle that they yeah. want to live off forever. But that just doesn't happen overnight, right? Like ideally you want to be able to set in place a plan, right? Coming from the preparation phase, it's all about getting your feet together, setting up a plan, knowing where you're going, having a roadmap, right? And getting really serious about where you want to go when it comes to, you know, the future phases that we're going to be mm -hmm. talking about with multiplication and protection. Yeah. But the generation phase, I believe everybody needs to go through that generation phase in some capacity. It could be small, it could be large. Everybody's different, everybody's lifestyle is different, but I believe it's extremely important to learn skill sets and systems. Because when I was in the, you know, nine to five, I learned how the system worked. I understood the overall picture, the macro vision of the company that I was working for. And in turn, where we are right now, I think it plays an extremely huge role, mm -hmm. the skill sets that I learned at that time. But yeah, man, that's yeah. Some, of, some of the key things that I'll leave you guys with yeah, in the well, generation phase. Listen, man, the generation phase is, is my absolute favorite. Oh, yeah. Like Jay said, this is when the we process. really met, this is when we got connected. Man, I don't even know, there's so much to say about so this, many, man. So many, so like, many stories. So, so give you guys a little bit of background about me, me personally, right? Right. Man, I've, I've been a generation kid since I was, since I came out the womb, man. Right. My, my first, if you go back, I got pictures and stuff like that when I was in like 10, maybe I was like 10 or 11 years old, mm -hmm. drawing pictures of sneaker companies that I was gonna build a, a million dollar sneaker company. And yeah. I used to watch my neighbor's cats and for, for money, yeah. go out there and mow, mow lawns, shovel snow. Like from a young age, I knew how to go out there and get it. Like a lot of you guys out there, I'm sure. Oh, we yeah, got a lot of sure. hustlers out there. We got a lot of people who know how to go out and get a dollar, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I've learned over the years. It's been about 12 years solid of me really putting my foot into entrepreneurship full-fledged. I'm talking about from 
I've done everything from mm. carpet cleaning to painting to um, you know handyman work to stand, sitting outside with the day laborers. Uh, you know, at the 7-Elevens trying to get jobs or at Labor Ready and places like that trying to get jobs for the day. Um, I've done it all, man. I've flipped snakes. Yeah, I, I, I was about to say, I can't <laughs> let you forget that. This guy was breeding snakes. Listen, Talk this about is one of the craziest stories, man. Breeding snakes. Listen, like, literally. If you ever want to get into an easy house, all my guys out there who, um, who yeah. uh, breed dogs and stuff like that, man. Right. Try our snakes. Snakes are way easier. Way easier. They take up way less space. All you got to do is feed them a mouse every now and then. They're cool. And they go yeah. for a lot more money, too. You can get oh, yeah. some really exotic snakes out there. Big but market. Even that was something that my son came to me and said he wanted a pet snake. And I was like, you know what? How can I, how can I get you a snake? I'm looking at the prices and say, yeah, I'm going to get you a snake. But listen, man, we're going to figure out a way to make some money off these snakes. So. Right. So listen, long, long story short, though, generation is very, very key, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, one thing I've learned over the years is this, is that your ability to generate an income is a direct correlation to your skill set and the value you bring to society. Absolutely. Right? So what I mean by that is this, if my skill set is um, a low value skill set to society, let's say it's retail, and nothing wrong with retail out there, nothing wrong at all. Retail is a service that is provided to the general society. Right. But in general, most people can do a retail job. It's, it's a, almost like an entry level job for most right, people. Right. Most people can be a waitress or a waiter or a bartender, not saying that they're not skilled jobs, they are. Mm -hmm. But it's not a high value skill set in terms of something like a doctor or a lawyer or uh, an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is a skill set, it's not a title or a position. Right. Right. A lot of people think entrepreneurship is a title or position, mm -hmm. it's not. It's a skill set that you develop. Learning how to build marketing systems, organizational oh, systems, right. hiring processes, um, scaling a company to a large right. level. These are entrepreneurial skills. You have entrepreneurs out there who can make a billion dollar company out of selling socks. We met an entrepreneur oh in God. California. Shout out to our guy, TJ Millionaire Mentor, right. who took us to an amazing location in California, one of the most exclusive Right. race clubs in the world with billionaires and billionaires millionaires and things of that nature and we met a guy who made billions of dollars from muffins, muffins. this is one of the richest people in the world he distributes some muffins for all the grocery stores on the east coast and west coast etc sam's club crazy you name it. right from muffins how many people can make muffins a lot a but lot. how many people have the entrepreneurial skills to, to turn a, a muffin into a billion dollar business that doesn't happen on accident. Mm -mm. That happens on purpose. That happens from somebody developing high value skill sets like entrepreneurship in order to scale their ability to make income, right? And so these are skill sets that you have to learn if you want to generate a large amount of income for yourself or your family or your legacy. A lot of you guys out there understand the concept that if you want to make more money in your career path, you need to go back to school and get a deeper skill set. Go get right. your master's, go get your PhD. Now, you may already be skilled at the job, but you gotta go back to get the PhD or the master's to right. prove that. that you have the skill set, mm -hmm. right? That's where, that's nine to five. You gotta go get certifications, you gotta go get uh, degrees in order to prove that you have those skill sets. So that's one way to do that, to increase your income, so that you have an income that allows you to invest and put money into the multiplication phase, right? Right. So if you do a good job in the preparation phase, like we just talked about previously, mm -hmm. right? You know how to keep your expenses low, increase your income, and now you have a larger discretionary or disposable income that you can now use to put into things like investments down the line. So job skills are a key and critical component in the generation phase as well. Now, outside of that, we have side hustles. Side hustles is something that, again, we're very familiar with. I've done side hustles, all different types of side hustles, flipping pallets, um, you know, going out and finding pallet wood. You can go out there and find free pallet wood that people are throwing away, get you some handyman skills for all my guys out there who got handyman skills, and turn those pallets into things like wine racks, right. tabletops, um, all Crazy. different types of things. Aesthetic. You get you a couple sanders and mm -hmm. pull the nails out and learn how to stain things. It doesn't take a lot. You can go out there on Craigslist. You can find free pallets on Craigslist. You can also go find products on Craigslist that are 
uh, for sale. I used to find pool tables. I get a right. storage unit. One of my Flipping. very first things I did when I came home from prison, I had my dad asked my dad, I said, Dad, please let me borrow two hundred dollars. I need to get a storage unit. He said, What the hell you want to do with a storage <laughs> unit? I said, Just please, I need a storage <laughs> unit. And what was I doing with the storage unit? I was on Craigslist in the free section on Craigslist. Oh yeah. And I used to scan the free section on Craigslist and find things like pool tables. Couches. And I go out there and I get a U-Haul, get a couple of my friends, we pack it up into the U-Haul, drive around to all the people that I set up for the day, because I only had a day with the U-Haul, I didn't have a lot of money. Sure. So I go out and I negotiate with these people to come pick up their stuff. It'd be tables, it'd be cabinets, it'd be whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And I go out there and I get all my friends, we go out and pick up the U-Haul, pack all that stuff into the U-Haul from stop to stop, drop it off in the storage unit. From the storage unit, I would go out, I'd fix it up, you know, I would uh, restain things, I would upcycle it, is what I found out it was called later, I didn't even <laughs> know this. But I'd take those things and I would go order them, like in the case of the pool tables, you get free pool tables. And I'd go out there and I'd relist it for four or five hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, it's free money, right? This is side hustles. But these are skill sets. Being a handyman, knowing how to resurface things, or whatever it may be, these are skill sets that you learn. So long story short, in the generation phase, we want to focus on skill set development. Choose what your lane is. If you're going to stick at nine to five, figure out what skill set you need to do to increase your nine to five earning capacity, right? And what your career path is. If it's entrepreneurship, figure out who out there can teach you entrepreneurial skills. Connect with coaches, connect with people out there who are successful in entrepreneurship to help increase your skill set as an entrepreneur because I promise you, you are, one way or another, you're going to pay for the, the information. You're going to pay for the lessons, right? Mm -hmm. When you're out here in the entrepreneurial world, you're going to take risks. You're going to start a business. You're going to sink money into that business. And if you don't have entrepreneurial skill sets innately, you're going to find yourself, or even if you do, you're going to find yourself making mistakes that are going to cost you money down the line. This is a big lesson that we had to learn. Oh, yeah. We lost oh, yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars hundreds. not knowing how to hire the right people. Over seven figures, yeah. Over seven figures. Yeah. How to train the right people, how to d develop HR systems and processes and policies. Man. We were just hiring friends and family and oh, stuff like God. that, trying to yeah. scale a company that we want to take public. And that's just not the way to go about it. Not it costs us. I, I don't even want to talk about how much it costs. Yeah. It costs us so a much lot. money in time, headache, pain, all you types of stuff, it. right? And we're trying to. It just is a whole mess. And even at the level that we're at, mm -hmm. we still go through these things. And so we had to learn, we had to find coaches. We had to hire the right people, people oh, who know these things right. better than we do. We never built a seven figure, eight figure, uh, a company that had dozens and dozens of employees. Nope. The most employees I had was like two, uh, 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 yeah. uh, two of my Spanish guys I used to used to roll with right. that knew how to do handyman work. We used right. to go out there and do houses. That was the most I ever had. Right. So now dealing with dozens of employees, we had to go out there and find people who could help us with these processes. So that's what we had to do. And so for you, same thing. If you're gonna go out there into the entrepreneurial world, find somebody. You don't even have to, maybe you don't have to pay them. Maybe they're an uncle or an aunt or somebody who has had a run a successful business that can go out there and mentor you. The SBDC, Small Business Development Council, mm -hmm. they have programs out there that you can go to. The SBA and SBDC oh, yeah. have uh, mentorship programs that you can tap into to find a mentor that can guide you through the entrepreneurial process. Because I promise you guys, you're gonna save you a lot of time and headache wow. and money trying to learn the entrepreneurial journey. Side hustles, same thing. Side hustles are a little bit more freestyle because it's not as intensive. They're just side hustles. You can Uber, you can do Lyft, oh, yeah. you can do Uber Eats. You Freelance. Can do freelancing. You can Fiverr, Fiverr, exactly. Yeah. There's, you can make a lot of money uh, uh, with doing side gigs and side hustles mm -hmm. um, through Turo or Airbnb or whatever it may be that maybe you don't have to spend all that money on coaching or, or things like that. Maybe you can figure those things out on your own because it doesn't, again, cost a whole lot of money. Wherever you are in that ecosystem, make sure you figure out how you're gonna generate an income and make sure you know exactly what your next step is gonna be. Prepare and generate. Those are the step one and step two in our process. Step three is multiplication. Now this is where it gets oh, fun. Man. A lot of y'all out there it's trying to jump straight stories. into multiplication. You only got the yep. generation right. You down yep. to your last $2,000. You trying to flip it in the stock market. Now you yep. stressing. You don't, you know don't what, care about you, nothing. You worried about what's going to happen to your trades because it's your last dollar. Yep. 
And on that note, even I'm talking, but I'm talking from experience. Yep. When I, we got, and you know what? I'm going to save this story for the multiplication phase. Let's go ahead and yeah. hop into the multiplication phase. I'm going to tell you guys about our journey in the multiplication phase and how it relates to how you can also learn from our lessons and learn yeah. from our losses so that you can be successful when it comes time for you to multiply your money as well.